When two objects collide, we can think of the collision as having three phases. In phase one, the colliders approach each other with their initial velocities. You might have one collider at rest, or both colliders heading toward each other, or both colliders heading in the same direction. The important features here are the mass of each collider and the incoming velocity of each collider. Each collider's mass and velocity is used in calculating its momentum, which is mass multiplied with velocity. Since velocity can be a positive or negative number to indicate direction, the momentum can also be a positive or negative number to indicate direction. In phase two, the colliders interact with each other through a force. The details of this force will change depending on the collision, but the important feature is that the colliders exchange momentum. This exchange of momentum is controlled by a number called the coefficient of restitution. In phase three, the colliders move along at their new outgoing velocities. The important features here are the mass of each collider and the outgoing velocity of each collider. The velocities have changed during the interaction, but the momentum exchange during phase two will always guarantee that the total momentum of the two colliders is the same during phase three as it was during phase one. You can think of the coefficient of restitution as a measure of how much kinetic energy was lost during the interaction. A coefficient of one means that no kinetic energy was lost during the interaction. We call this ideal case an elastic collision. An elastic collision can happen when two colliders interact without touching, like two carts with repelling magnets or two subatomic particles with the same charge. This code generates two colliders and then takes them through the three phases of a collision. First, we give each collider a mass and an incoming velocity. Then we set the coefficient of restitution. In this video, we'll keep the coefficient set to one to create elastic collisions. Then we can start phase one, where the colliders move until the collision. We move each collider using distance equals velocity multiplied with time. Then we check for a collision by comparing the distance between the two colliders with the size of the two colliders. Once the two colliders touch in the animation, the variable collided is set equal to true and the code will exit the animation loop. To learn more about this collision check, see the video linked in the description below. Once the collision has been detected, the code moves on to phase two. Here we calculate the new velocities of the left collider and right collider based on the coefficient of restitution. Notice that we need to store these new values under new names first, since we need to reference the previous values in both calculations. Then we can save these new values under the previous names. Finally, the code enters phase three, where the colliders move away with their new velocities. Notice that this animation loop uses the exact same calculations as the first, except this time we don't need to check for a collision because, uh, well, I'm pretty sure that can't happen again. Let me know if you find a case where it can. Anyway, let's first try the code with a left collider coming in and the right collider stationary and with both colliders having the same mass. The result is really straightforward. The left collider gives all its momentum to the right collider and comes to a stop. From the graphs, we can calculate the total momentum before the interaction and after the interaction and get the same number. We call this sameness the conservation of momentum. Let's try leaving the velocities as they are, but make the right collider heavier. The left collider rebounds off of the right one, but the total momentum comes out to be the same. Since these are elastic collisions, you can also calculate the total kinetic energy and find that it stays the same before and after the interaction. There are lots of ways to play around with this code. Follow the link in the description below to find a set of activities to guide you in learning more about collisions. Here we calculate the new velocities of the left collider and right collider base collider. I mispronounced that word. It was collateral damage.